Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Join me this week on this episode as my special guests are Wendy Lyon Sunshine, who wrote a book called Tender Paws, and uh, it's all about being a dog parent. So it's a really interesting book. It has science-backed fact about being a gentle and loving dog parent. And Nina Zapala is joining us. She's been on before and she is actually a coach, a mentor. She helps people find their travel personalities and learn the best places to go to based on your personality. It's really interesting. And lastly, we have Chef Amanda who's from a restaurant in Washington, D.C. And she's actually from a French restaurant. And in honor of the Olympics, well, the Olympics have just passed in Paris, but uh, in honor of the Olympics and all the Olympic parties going on, we thought we'd have her on to discuss suggestions for dishes you could have if you wanted to throw an Olympic party. And I also wanted to mention that coming up is one of my favorite holidays in Europe. It's August 15th. In Italy, they call it Ferragusto. And uh, it, it kind of, for them, it symbolizes the end of summer. We have Labor Day in the U.S., but in Europe, it's more Ferragusto, which is the 15th of August. Everyone is starting to, to go home from vacation and get ready for school and work. And, and uh, anyway, there are different ways that that holiday is celebrated, and I want it to tell you how to how it's celebrated all around actually around Europe so Fer Augusta which is coming up on August 15th it dates all the way back to Emperor Augustus in 18 BC it was initially a day of rest after weeks of hard work in the agricultural sector and Italians celebrate Ferragusto today, including beach outings, picnics, and there's a lot of religious processions going on, like the Vera de Messina in Messina, Italy. There is a lot of traditional Ferragusto dishes, such as roasted meats, pasta salads, fresh fruits. If you're on the beach in Italy for Ferragusto, people are bringing whole watermelons and uh, cutting up the watermelons there on the beach and having watermelon also. So that's one of the, the dishes, but there are many dishes served on the beach or at a picnic wherever you are in Italy. It does have a religious significance to the holiday and August 15th is celebrated as the Assumption of Mary in many Catholic countries. And if you're in France, Spain, Portugal, as well as Italy, you'll see a lot of ceremonies and processions that take place for this holiday that also has a religious significance. My memories of August 15th, some of my favorite memories are spending August 15th on the beach in Nice, France, where there was an incredible fireworks display. So that's also a tradition in, on some of the beaches to have these incredible fireworks displays. Now in Hungary, it's the National Day of Hungary. August 15th is. It's Hungary's National Day, marking the foundation of the country. There's a lot of parades, fireworks, and cultural events that take place across Hungary on August 15th. In Antwerp, Belgium, it's Mother's Day, and they celebrate Mother's Day on this day. It's a tradition that differs from the rest of Belgium. It's only celebrated in Antwerp, Belgium, and there's a lot of special events and activities organized for mothers on that day. August 15th also happens to be Napoleon's birthday, which it is still celebrated in some parts of Europe. And August 15th is one of the most relaxing days in, I remember, I 
No, in Italy, everybody just really takes advantage of that last day of what's considered kind of their last day of the official holiday of summer vacation holiday and most everything is closed and people are just relaxing either on the beach or in the mountains or on a picnic so it's a great holiday to uh, celebrate just a really relaxing day and stay with me for our interviews discover the secrets of authentic italian cuisine with the Basic Art of Italian Cooking book series. These beautifully crafted cookbooks take you on a culinary journey throughout Italy. And you can get your copy today at marialiberati.com or artoflivingprimamedia.com or your favorite bookstore. Taste the passion, savor the flavors, because cooking is an art. My special guest today is Wendy Lyon Sunshine, and uh, she has a book out. She's an author, and she's an author of the book called Tender Paws, and it's a uh, subject that's near and dear to my heart because I have a fur baby. She's the love of my life, and uh, which I'm sure many people do also. So uh, Wendy's going to help us on some gentle parenting tips, which I think are really, really important. So Wendy, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me, Maria. I'm delighted to speak with you today. So I just want to ask you first, how did you come up with um, this book? Um, What made you want to write this book? Yeah, it's interesting. The book evolved from my own journey, started with a rescue puppy who um, was a little more challenging than I ever anticipated. Uh And I was kind of at my wit's end. And really, uh, honestly, I was talking to my husband, like, can we bring her back to the shelter? I, I, I'm not qualified. This dog is like, you know, more than I, this puppy is more than I can handle. And and he, he didn't see it the way I saw it. He, he, he believed in her still. And oh, I had good. to, and I had to come up with some strategies because things were not going well at, uh, in the, in the dog walking puppy handling uh-huh. department. And what I did was I circled back to work that I had done helping write parenting books. Um, I thought, you know, these experts work with some kids who really have some difficult backgrounds. They they maybe were adopted from overseas or from uh, taken from, you know, child protective service situations, and they really were struggling. And so it takes all the expertise you have to, to help a child like that. And I'd help write this book called The Connected Child. And I thought, well, you know, they're working miracles there. Maybe they can work miracles for me. <laughs> <laughs> And and the real miracle was simply to open my eyes and and come at the situation with more compassion and understanding, and really um, appreciate what the little puppy was going through. Try to see it through her eyes, and give her more time and and you know space to to be a puppy to process things at her own speed, and. Mm-hmm. It helps set her up for success more than I had. Mm-hmm. I just sort of assumed, yeah, you take her home and, and we're good. <laughs> right. Uh, Which most people do. And it's not the case. They have to. I, I think people don't realize they're, they're beings. They are actual living beings and they have feelings and the whole nine yards. And people don't realize that they have things they have to go through. It's not like it's just a piece of cardboard or a doll that you bring home and they just do what they're supposed to do. So they have to understand that too. Right. And the parenting attitude is is really appreciating what our role can be uh, right. and how we can be supportive and guiding them. Uh, and of course, sometimes drawing limits uh, mm-hmm. as appropriate and keeping everybody safe. Yes. But um, helping them, helping them feel safe and, and, uh, and just appreciating that, like you say, they are their own little being. And you know, yes. what's amazed me uh, is just how much they look to us for guidance. I mean, they, it makes sense that we, you know, we have, we have, we're hosting them, we've invited them into our homes, and we call the shots there. So yes. they really depend on us to, to advocate for them. 
Yes, exactly. I just think it's so incredible that they each one of them has their own little unique personality and people don't realize that. So if you give them time, you know, and if you spend time with them to realize that you'll understand their personality, their likes, their dislikes, their, you know, their habits and things like that. They have the same, you know, likes and personality and all just like we do. And people don't realize that they do. They think, you know, a lot of people think, oh, that's ridiculous, but they do. They have their own, you know, their own ways also. But um, give us, since we don't have a whole lot of time, but can you give us some um, some parenting tips for, you know, people that have pups? Sure. I'm happy to do that. Well, I use an acronym called HEARTS to uh -huh. sum up what are, these are best practices for working with children and it works for dogs too. Uh -huh. Okay, so we can borrow these practices. These are just simple principles. Uh, right. The first one, H, is for heal the body. And that makes sense because if you're hurting or you're itchy or you're <laughs> tired or you're hungry, you're not going to be at your best. And that's true for puppies. It's true for kids. It's true for us. Uh, for E, out of hearts, this is where you engage and you optimize the brain. And mm -hmm. that means what's interesting is to do that we let kids move. We let them use their bodies because the brain is actually activated by their interaction with the world. So they can solve problems and they can play freely. Um, that's why too much restriction in a small place is not healthy for growing kids. It's not healthy for dogs and puppies dogs. growing. Exactly. Um, then we have in hearts, we have the A, which is mm -hmm. appropriate environments with felt safety. Um, and so it's just being mindful of, are we putting them in a situation where they're going to be comfortable, you know, uh, not just for one minute, but for a little bit of time, if we expect them to spend time there. Um, right. And that feeling of safety is so essential for kids. It's essential for dogs. Um, and what's interesting is I learned, it's not just like a nice to have, our bodies cannot repair themselves. We can't get the benefit of, of optimizing our brains or anything if if we're feeling unsafe constantly, if that's a chronic problem. So right. we think about environment there, appropriate environment. And then R is for respectful and secure relationships, uh, which brings out the best in all of us. We, we want to be treated with respect. We want to treat the little ones with respect. Uh, and we can do that for dogs, right? You know? exactly. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. And, um, it, it's even the way we handle them when we're walking them and giving them a moment and, you know, not dragging them around by their neck. for Exactly. <laughs> You're exactly right. Yes. Um, and so we have set up a, a relationship and then they want to cooperate with us more, right? If uh -huh. they feel like we've got their back, they're, they're more willing to engage positively with us. So uh, I love, I love that building relationships. Then T and hearts is for teaching sensitively and positively. Uh -huh. And you'll notice I haven't, use the word training specifically i use the word teaching because mm -hmm. we teach kids and we can teach dogs uh, and we can think of it as they are a learner mm -hmm. we want to give them the opportunity to thrive and and set them up with appropriate tasks that mm -hmm. they can that they can succeed in right? right like a little think of a preschool teacher they they give little tasks and then they celebrate the kids participation and doing well and, and making that effort and when they get it right it's it's a happy thing instead of a scary thing. exactly yes exactly and then the last part of hearts is that s which is support the individual because as you rightly say dogs really have their own personality perhaps they're a different breed and even within breeds they can have variation it's quite yes. astounding um, also, depending if they're a senior dog versus a puppy, for example, all those unique aspects of that creature, um, we can honor that and, and be responsive. So that, you know, thinking of hearts, if we can bring those hearts to our interactions uh, with the animals, it's a uh, easy way to keep us just pointed in the right direction. It helps us make decisions, I think, um, it's, with it's hearts with heart. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. I think that that's so important. And if you just treat them in a respectful way, as you said, you're going to get that love and respect back instead of just trying to, you know, like you said, yank them around or whatever. It's not the case. And you get so much more out of the relationship when you do that. You actually build a relationship 
people don't take advantage of that kind of relationship that they can build with, um, you know, their pups. And um, yeah, you make a great point. There's some magic when uh -huh. an animal comes to you voluntarily. And, and uh, I mean, I remember a neighbor had a, a dog, a beautiful Afghan hand, hound. I've never seen a um, like a borzoi, actually. And they're tall, regal dogs. And this dog was just always kind of watching. And I would put my hand out and he really wasn't very interested for the longest time. And then one day he'd known me, I guess, however long he needed to know me. He right. just walked up and leaned his whole body up on me. And it gave me the opportunity. He had this glorious coat and he he just stayed there leaning up. I, I was like, oh, my goodness, I've been approved. <laughs> you know, I've gotten his trust for whatever reason. Now he yes. decided I'm OK. And uh, usually it's sooner than that. Right. We we, yes. <laughs> we don't have to wait so long for many dogs. But it's so magical when they they come to us voluntarily and, and just show who they are. And like I have this. You know he's sleeping now, but he is—he's the most enthusiastic creature, and he's just delighted to be in, invited to do things and participate. And he brings such happiness to all of us. I—I I, I mean, I want to treat him well because he's such a joy. Exactly. Exactly. You. I think you said it all right there. Exactly. And people are. I think many people are missing that they could bring such happiness to their lives if you, you know, think of it in this way. The book sounds wonderful. So hopefully, a lot of people will be getting that and taking um, some of your tips. I think that's such a great approach to raising um, a pup. And Wendy, tell people we're almost out of time. So tell people where can they find the book tender pause sure you can find it at your favorite bookseller it's available online through the usual channels amazon barnes and noble it's also on recorded books uh through audible um so whatever you prefer you can find it tender pause Great. yeah thank, thank you, you so much thank you for being here wendy thanks so much hi this is maria liberati wishing you a happy summer and hoping that along with indulging in great food and drink, you'll also indulge in my book series. If you'd like to take a trip to Italy without leaving your armchair, get a copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. Peace, love, and pasta. And uh, everybody's cel celebrating the Olympics. We're trying to find a reason to have a party and use the Olympics as a theme. It's so neat to be able to do that and watch the Olympics and gather with family and friends. And uh, my special guest today is Whitney Am Amaro. Am I saying that correct, Whitney? Thanks. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yes. She's a chef and uh, she's from Primrose Restaurant in Washington. And she's going to share with us some, uh, a few French recipes that um, we can share, that we can rather um, have to get in kind of the French spirit of the Olympics and, and make that a theme of your party. Whitney, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm I'm really excited. I'm a huge fan of the Olympics. Um, I just saw that they won the gold medal. The oh wow! Yeah, oh, the the US USA. Wow. Yeah, I didn't get a yeah. chance so, to watch it today. That's that is exciting. Yeah, so very exciting. Yeah, so um, yeah, so come some of the things that I came up with was I think of like French food and I think of parties. I think of charcuterie boards. Like that's the first thing that kind of like pops into my head right. and you can kind of play around with this you can kind of uh, keep it all french if you want uh -huh. to or you can kind of throw in some like american twist with some cheddar cheese right. maybe some italian cheese, and cheese um kind of like make it like your own olympic board if you will exactly because um, it's international so, really the olympics are international right, right? even though they're in right. france you could do it international exactly Right. So the one that I did today is mostly um, for um, like very French inspired. So yes. I figured we could do like um, a chicken pate. I love a chicken pate, especially in the summertime. It's light. Um, it's just really good with bread. Um, some good cheeses are um, like a borzen cheese. I really like that. Uh -huh. um, I also like a good um, 
sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, a good cabin bear is really delicious. Uh -huh. uh, also, Latour, I know that's kind of an Italian cheese, um, but I think Latour is just a really delicious, yummy cheese. Uh -huh. um, and then for the bread, I, you know, just go to like a nice local bakery that sells really good. Um, oh, sorry. My screen just went black. Can you still see me? Yes, I can. Uh-huh. Oh, my screen is just uh -huh. turned off. Oh, well, as long as you can still hear me, then I guess. Yes, I'll I can. Going. And I still see you. Yes. Okay. So, um, and then just go to your, you know, a local bakery that has, you know, fresh, um, baguettes. And if not, I, I feel like whole foods is a good option too, for a nice baguette, uh -huh. but definitely try to source that from like a local bakery. If you have a French one near you, definitely yes. go there and get, get some bread. Um, I think it would be really delicious. Uh-huh. That sounds like a great idea. Yes. And, you know, and with this, there's so many options um, that you can do with this. There's so many different types of cheeses. There's so many different types of meats. Uh -huh. I mean, you can pick it from anywhere. Like you could be like, oh, I want to do Italian or I want to do American. I want to do French. You can kind of fuse all of those um, areas together and kind of just pick your own, uh -huh. um, your own, your own style. Mm -hmm. that one. And your combination. Yeah, that's great. And I like that because that's kind of very, it's like informal and people can graze and watch the Olympics because probably they're yeah. going to want to be focused on watching. But, um, you know, that's a great way to be able to munch on stuff and, and watch as well. Good yes, idea. I... And so what other recipes do you have for us or ideas for so the next dish that I have is one of my new favorites. Um, uh -huh. so it's just like seared scallops. It's very simple. And then it's called the sabis, which is just like onions, thyme, butter, uh -huh. and salt. Just like slowly cooked and you don't brown it. You just let it kind of just slowly cook. Um, it takes about, I usually cook it for about an hour and a half. Right. Um, but if, if you were doing things at home, you didn't really have that time. You could just kind of like leave it in your crock pot. Uh -huh. and kind of just go go with that uh -huh. um and it, it is like so tasty i love dipping bread in it i think it's good with scallops i mean uh -huh. you could even do fish if you mm -hmm. wanted to like a good sure. sea bath um even cod would be nice with it um, yeah yeah like anything really goes with this it's delicious mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then we just top it with a salt um burt which is really just a french green sauce uh -huh. um and we we use parsley, chive, tarragon, and chervil. And we kind of just kind of chop all those up. We put a bit of lemon, a little olive oil, salt, and roasted almonds just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. Um, and it's really, it's just, this is really like a nice, fresh, summery like dish. And I also think it's good for the Olympics too, because you don't want to be like slaving over the stove, like cooking for so long. Like right. the hardest part about this is just like the onions. But if you put them in your slow cooker, you can watch the Olympics while you're kind of cooking yourself. Exactly. Your dinner, your... Ex yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's an important part. You don't want to cook something that's going to be complicated. And then you have to be in the kitchen while everybody else can be at the TV. You want to cook right. something that's easy and in a simple, you know, a simple manner, be able to present it a simple way for you too. So um yes and go ahead i think you had another a third recipe or third yeah idea. so this is my uh it's called kafuti uh -huh. um it's usually they usually eat this in france for breakfast but i think it's a great dessert especially for the summertime i i really enjoy eating this one it's very custardy it's uh -huh. light and you can put seasonal fruit in it uh -huh. um I recommend using, if you go online and you like Google this, you can get um, Julia Child's recipe and uh -huh. her recipe is really, really good. So how um, is we spelling Clafouti? C-L-A-F. Oh, Clafoutis. Clafoutis? Yeah. Like a Clafoutis. Yes. Clafoutis. Yes. yes. I may uh -huh. have not said it right, but yes. That's okay. Yes. Clafoutis. Yes. I know in Italy, the apricot one is very popular also, the yeah. apricot clafoutis. Yes. Actually, I have a recipe on my blog for the apricot clafoutis. So yes, go ahead. And I, I love it with sour cherries. I've done it with sour cherries and sweet cherries. I've done it uh -huh. with peaches. I've done it with apricots. I've done it with blackberries. Um, 
And I think all of those things are just really delicious. I put a little bit of Chantilly cream on top and it's good. And then this one's great too for the Olympics because you can put it in the oven and, you know, kind of bake it as you're watching the Olympics. It's not something like, oh, I have to, you know, like a exactly. cookie or something. I have to scoop. It's just very easy, very simple. Yes. No, that's a great, great dish too, to me. Definitely very good. I love it. It's not, doesn't have lots and lots of stuff in it. It's really good. It's kind of simple, but it's really delicious also. That's great. Yes. Any other ideas or anything? I think you just had the three. Was there any other? Recipe? I just had the three. Yes. If you also like want a side, a liege salad is great for the summertime too, um, which is really just a potato salad. It's like a fried, it's like confit fried potato salad. Uh -huh. Um, and I like to use like a red wine vinaigrette with that. And you can uh -huh. play around with whatever, whatever veggies you want to put in it, radishes, fennel, um, whatever you can get that's like fresh and good is great mm -hmm. for the salad. Uh -huh. I've done green with it. I've done Roma beans. Um, and then you just top it with a little bit of bacon and the vinaigrette is really just like a lot of herbs, a lot of lemon, red wine vinegar. You can use a nice, um, aioli with it it's really it's really delicious so we have Nina Zapala she's been on before really really interesting guests and she kind of helps people find themselves through traveling and um, she's a guide and a mentor and today we're going to talk about how to find or how to match your personality to the place that you travel to. Cause it's not all about just going to the most hippest, trendiest place might not match your personality and it's not a fit. So um, Nina and I just had a conversation about that. So in order to have a really great travel experience, you really should match it to your personality, right Nina? Well, I love that you said that. And, and, uh -huh. and you know, we are kind of on the same mindset Yes. On this because when you travel, you know, we talk about these next trendy places where get, they're getting marketing to you and you get all excited thinking, yeah, yeah, that's me. And then when you get there, you're let down because it doesn't align with your personality type. Maybe exactly. it doesn't align with your values, your, how you want to travel. You know, exactly. maybe you're seeking for, um, an, not an escape per se, but a more quiet, a more reflective place right. to discover yourself. Or maybe you have that personality type that you're you you're active. You want to be on the go, but you certainly can't be on the go with throngs of people stopping mm -hmm. you from your on the go experience. Exactly. So actually, those those throngs of people kind of stop your experience and hinder what you truly desire from a place. Exactly. So I like to help people yeah, match their personality type with the with the place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so you know. We even talked about, you know, sometimes we do fall for those trendy marketing slick ads that make everything look gorgeous, right? You're like, oh, I yes. want to be there. And we've all done it, right? We've all yes, done it. Yes, yes. And you get there. Yeah. And you get there and you show up and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so busy. And so when I, instead of like, I hate to say that, but instead of like all the expenses and all the, all the preparation and all the travel that you've done to get there, let's not look at it as a loss. Let's get into the personality of the place, your personality mm -hmm. and the place and start becoming more alive. Just start observing what's around you and what's attracting, uh, very much attractive to you. Yes. Are you in like a big city where you see somebody, you know, just sitting there quietly on a bench, just watching the world go around. You're like, oh my gosh, I so need that. Uh -huh. Well, that's your personality telling you to slow down, you right. need to get into more reflective. You need more meditation. Mm -hmm. So take a meditative walk. Go yeah. into a local garden. Take that meditative walk. Ground yourself. Exactly. Because once you're doing that, you'll get more into yourself as far as what your needs and desires, because you're going to listen to yourself mm -hmm. inward instead of focusing on what you don't want. You, exactly. you want to stop the conversation with yourself. Exactly. Go exactly. Let's reflect a little bit. 
I've it's, already made the preparations for the trip. I don't want to throw, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, as they ex say, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I, and what is your goal for a vacation? Is it to take a vacation to really, you know, take a vacation and enjoy yourself? Or are you going just to get on some kind of a hip trend and then you get there and it's just, a, you know, a rat race? You just don't, you know, it's, it's something that you're not really able to enjoy. So, um, that's you have exactly to look at right. it, right? Exactly. So that's what, exactly. what are some things that people should, I guess, look at to, uh, before they choose a destination to go to, to kind of sync their personality with the place they go yeah. to? Yeah. Well, I wrote a whole book on this. Right. So, okay. They go there yeah. first and pick up the book. They want to it's called yes. unpack your personality, let your inner guide be your travel guide. So it gives you a roadmap mm -hmm. to your travel personality type. But okay. beyond that, like, or, you know, be, beyond that, I think one of the things that you need to do is have an idea of why you want to travel. Mm -hmm. And you have to know your personality type because your personality type is so wonderful. It tells you it's, it's, functions or, or your characteristic traits, your functions, your cognitive functions really tell you what you desire. So right. you kind of have to go back and look at your personality. If you're an introvert, you don't want to go to some big bustling city. It's 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 going to annoy the hell out of you. So don't go there, right? Exactly. And even yes. if you have a spouse that wants to go there and you're like, okay, that's what I did. I pleased all the time and I'm over uh -huh. my pleasing stage. But even if you do do that, mm -hmm. you know, in that situation, like, okay, I'm here for you, but I'm here for myself as well. So right. I'm going to take some time for me and I'm going to do a couple side solo trips right. that really engage my personality typing. So exactly. my personality, so you really kind of have to know like what you're traveling for. Is it relaxation? Is it to go have fun and play? Right. right? We need more play in our lives. You know? it, yeah, it, exactly. It, you know, is it, you know, is it to do some childlike behavior things? It's just those fun things that you wouldn't normally do, right? Exactly. Or yes. It could be, or could be you have a, you have an issue that you're really trying to solve in your life. You uh -huh. like you're going through a career transition. You're, right. you know, you're maybe going for a divorce, good life, whatever it is. You're, you have this big thing that you know you need to change and being in your life every day doesn't allow that. So exactly. maybe you're there to. So start exploring that and i call those solutions yes because <laughs> you have to go inward right yes. and ask yourself exactly what what do i what do i need at this stage of life what is my what is my inner guy that higher dimension of yourself that super conscious what does it need to show me what does it need to tell me and when exactly. you're on vacation even lounging by the pool and getting quiet with yourself and observing instead of engaging you'll start, it'll start percolating some answers for you. Exactly. So there's a myriad of reasons you travel mm -hmm. and your personality type two is, is, is not just, it's not siloed in a box, right? Cause your personality right. type is your personality type. Exactly. It's your life experiences. It's what exactly. you've experienced. And it has a lot to do with social conditioning, like how exactly. we're socialized in society. And are those right for you or not right for you? Or somebody else's opinion right for you? Or are those beliefs no longer serving you? Exactly. So you're you're a you're a very you're a tapestry of a lot of things in your life, but your personality type is the fundamental anchor that huh. really helps you see yourself. And then you build on that with spiritual practices. So exactly. That's something I really stress that people know because you know taking a vacation anymore is not cheap <laughs> no it's not and there's a lot of hassle involved with the plane and all the stuff that happens that does create a lot more stress than yeah. it used to in the yes. you know in the in the past so you know it's a lot um and and the thing i i think you probably will agree is you don't necessarily have to go far to take a vacation you know, okay. you can, like you were saying, just do a quiet walk somewhere, get away for like some time, and even an hour, I think, right? A quiet walk and yes. get with yourself, right? Yes. And uh, yes. you're taking a vacation that way also, or lounging yes. by a pool, like you said, just quietly lounging yes. and kind of reflecting. I like to call those micro holidays, right? There you They're go. micro yes. vacations. 
Yes. Yes. Because it, it, it is just kind of like, it's just, you know, why I think travel is such a good path for self-discovery is exactly what you're saying. Just step away from your daily life. Right. It could be an hour. You exactly. just take an hour. You go walk in your local park, clear your head. Exactly. Right. And start getting into yourself. Start thinking about, is this what I want in my life? You know, these are big questions. Or maybe you go play. Maybe you go throw stones on a lake. I don't exactly. know what it is for you. Exactly. Only you can decide that. Yes. But I love that you're addressing that because I feel it's very important. That uh -huh. it could be, I, I did the last three years, all I've done is take road trips. Uh -huh. I, I haven't gotten on a plane. I'm just like, I'm just going to take road trips. Yes. Because... I just want to do that. I don't want to get on a plane right now. Just for whatever reason, that's what I'm being told. So I follow my gut intuition. Exactly. That's what I've been doing. And you're it's doing very enjoyable. Yes, yes. There you go. And I know I've been taking, I haven't had a chance to take really far away trips in the right. in the past, say, year. But I've been doing a lot of these, what you call micro holidays. And I just love them because no stress involved. I'm not having to pack and get on a plane yes. and make all kinds of arrangements and all that. And they're just so wonderful and lovely. I get to do these little micro, you know, micro holidays, as you call them. Yes. So whatever, yes. you know, but that fits my personality. It may not fit others. It does. It fits right. my personality. I love it. And it just really, I mean, it does bring me joy because I really enjoy that time. So, um, you know, as you're saying, I think that's why it's so yeah. important to your personality to right. pick something that that definitely fits that aligns with you yeah and if you are the person that wants to get on the plane and go 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 because there's a lot of people personalities that, that are very active they want to go they want to do, do that me, which yes. is great i'm that yes. person but i've decided to lay back on that but yes you know i offer this and even in the book i say you know there's some breathing techniques that i say you should have uh -huh. like quick techniques that you can just remember in your mind when you're going somewhere, you're stressed, you do just a quick breathing exercise to calm you down, to know right. that this too will work out. Even yes. if you're delayed for days, it's yes. going to work out. Exactly. It's going it's to work. So let's look at it. So if you're delayed for days, who are you going to meet? Maybe you, who knows? Maybe you meet exactly. the love of your life. Who knows what's going to happen? Exactly. You have to look at these serendipitous moments as divinely inspired because I'm going to tell you, your inner self always knows what's best for you. What's best for so, you. Yeah. So I feel like even those things, people go, oh, gosh, no, no, no. If we're going to travel, we know that's going to happen. So exactly. let's prepare ourselves yes. and, and look at it from a different perspective. Let's right. just pick up perspectives a little bit. Yes. Because you have to realize that if you are traveling, it's a privilege. It's a yes. privilege to travel. Exactly. It, don't it look is. at it like it's, yeah, it's it not is. this falling thing that, oh my gosh, poor exactly. me. No, no, no. We are, exactly. we are privileged to be traveling. So you're let's, absolutely right. You're let's absolutely look at it from right. that perspective. From that perspective. You know. And, you know, my mom always used to say when things happen, it's for a reason. So if your plane yes. is delayed, look at it as well. There might be a reason. Maybe, as you said, you'll meet the love of your life or you'll just meet somebody that's very interesting. I have exactly. a few times when my plane was delayed, met some really interesting people oh, yeah. that oh, kind yeah. of opened my mind to different things, you know, and yes. it, it was just so interesting. So don't use it as a time to stress out. As you're right. saying, use it. And and as you're saying, when you're traveling like that, you always have to have an open mind and know all kinds of different, you know, delays and things may happen. So use it as an opportunity, make it an opportunity yes. um, to maybe learn or meet other people, you know, that are in the same situation. Try new foods or something. Maybe you're exactly to try new foods. Or if you're at an no airport, yes, you can try yeah. new foods, go into the stores, you know, and There's experience so local. Yeah, yeah. There's I a don't lot like of what you're saying, because it's, it's all about, it's it's about you're you're talking about shifting perspectives and having a new perspective right and sitting instead of sitting in that old self you know and honestly it, it's kind of comes from all of the distractions in our society like you turn on the news it's kind of negative you yes. know and people like get that negative thing going and then it just you know how that is it's so easy yes. to, to turn into that negative channel negative. Yes. you have to be so conscious of uh -huh. turning into the positive channel positive. of life, right? Because this exactly. is, you know, 
Travel is a privilege. And people exactly. need to start realizing it's a privilege. That, you it know, really the earth is not a commodity. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. You're yeah. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's wonderful. So, um, Nina, tell us well, what's the name of your book again? Because we want to tell everybody we're almost out of time. But that's yes. okay. It's it's called Unpack Your Personality. Let your inner guide be your travel guide. Okay. And it's on Amazon. Sure. Um, it's on everywhere books are sold. I've pretty much gotten it everywhere books are sold. Um, and it really is a transformative guidebook uh -huh. using personality typing with a modern day twist. I, uh -huh. I have infused it with spirituality because I really do believe that inner guide, that wise inner guide within should uh -huh. lead your life. Yes. And the yes. external that you do. And it just expresses through your personality. Right? Exactly. But it uses all the beautiful things about your personality type to express. So without your personality type, it can't express. So you exactly. have to be in tune with your personality to let that happen. So exactly. it's kind of a new way to think about personality typing. But And travel is, like we're just saying, the great perspective to start discovering yourself. It's exactly. the perfect time. It is. It really oh, is. And to definitely, definitely. So great. All, yeah. all great tips. Nina, thanks so much for being here. And hopefully you'll we'll yeah. have you back again in the near future. Oh, I just love these talks. We have so much fun. And just as a we side did. note, too, people can go on my blog. I just wrote a post. Best yes. Beaches for your personality type. So that's oh, a new blog yeah. that's out. Um, so just tell us considering your blog. Yes, tell us your blog again yes. also. It's Nina's yeah, it's just um it's my name, Ninazapala.com slash blog. Okay. And there you okay. go. All my so they can dig in and get a lot of insights on their travel personality exactly. just by going to the blog. Exactly, definitely. That's yeah. great. All great tips. Yeah. Thanks again, Nina. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show and thanks for joining us. And as always, thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and my special guest for my interviews today. And also, you can find me at marialiberati.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at Maria Liberati for a chance to win one of the books from my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. So just follow me on Instagram at Maria Liberati and you'll get a chance to uh, win one of the books. You can also follow me on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati, on Twitter or X as they call it at Maria Liberati, and videos of the podcasts can be seen on the Maria Liberati Show channel on YouTube. And you can also find videos, cooking, my cooking videos, my TV videos, podcast interviews on Vimeo at vimeo.com slash Maria Liberati. If you are in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania listening area, you can hear more of the Maria Liberati Show on WWDBAM radio on Saturdays at 1.30 p.m. And if you're not in that listening area, you can find it online at www.dbam.com. And you can find my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Holidays and Special Occasions, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, anywhere books are sold online, Amazon.com, Art, uh, Art of Living Prima Media.com, on my website, MariaLiberati.com, on Kindle, and as mentioned, anywhere books are sold. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for your chance to win a copy of one of the books for my award winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. And uh, next week, we will be starting our back to school segment. And uh, I have been having fun discovering some and researching some of the best products out there for back to school. So we will have a back to school best of products for 2024. That's coming up also. We'll be talking about some of those products and having some special guests that will be sharing 
some back to school tips yes it is that time again unfortunately it is back to school time and until next week peace love and pasta